I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our data engineering playlist and we're going to look at variables in SQL Server, uh, also known as TSQL variables. And uh, these are very, very handy for uh, creating, you know, all kinds of things like stored procedures or if you just want to run some SQL and have some variables. Uh, you can use variables inside of, you know, loops and things and you can change their value as your, uh, as your SQL uh, procedure runs. And so uh, variables are very, very important and uh, this is going to give you some simple examples that you can use uh, to put some variables into your project. So without further ado, let's get to our variables in SQL Server. Interested in coaching or one-on-one -on -one help on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description below. Okay, so I'm starting uh, with SQL Server Management Studio here, and I'm going to uh, start a new uh, query, uh, which is just a worksheet against uh, an SQL uh, server database that I have, and the database name is Crufty. And uh, we're gonna try out some variables uh, just for demonstration so that you can get an idea uh, what it's like and and how to use variables in a simple way uh, in SQL Server. So the main thing uh, to remember when using variables in SQL Server is that you're going to use the declare uh, keyword there and uh, declare and then you're going to put a um, an at sign in front of the variable name and then declare what kind of variable that it is. It's kind of similar to when you create uh, fields in a table or something like that in SQL Server. And make sure to terminate your uh, statements with a semicolon there. And then uh, to set the, the value of the variable, you actually use the set um, keyword, which is uh, similar to some other uh, programming languages, but most programming languages do not use the set uh, keyword. Um, they usually just say the variable equals this or is equal to this. And so um, so that's sort of how you can uh, set the variable in uh, TSQL. Um, and what we can do is once we've set some variable um, values, we can use a select statement to get the total, uh, say in this case, the total beans. Uh, I've got red beans and white beans, and if I select red beans plus white beans as total beans, then I can use that as a statement. Now, if I delete the set statements there, um, I can actually go up and just like in many other programming languages, uh, you can uh, initialize the variable uh, using the equal sign and uh, that is quite handy as well. So, so I can set you know red beans equal to 10, white beans equal to 20 right in the declare statement and then I can use those variables, or I can set them to other values later on in my program. Um, and uh, it's not very much different for, you know, the other variable types. Um, I can use an NVAR car for first name and last name, and I can uh, set those values, and then I can use those values um, in my sort of in my processing. So I would use use the set uh, keyword again. And uh, I would uh, say set at first name is equal to, is equal to John, and then set last name uh, equal to Smith, say. And then I could use um, I could use those uh, those variable values either in the select statement, or I can I can also use them uh, to calculate other variables, um, which is a handy um, uh, it's a handy characteristic as well. So I could uh, declare a full name variable uh, as well. Um, I could go down and you know uh, get rid of this other statement here, uh, the red beans and white beans, uh, and I could do something else, say like select first name um, as a first name with you know camel case there, um, last name with the last name, uh, and and. Uh, and that'll give me, you know, the variable values, just like we saw in the first one. Uh, but I could also, you know, I could calculate, I could calculate the the full name either in the statement or I could calculate it 
um, by putting the values together in another way. So, so um, say you were inside of a loop and, and you're using the variable over and over again, well, that would be something that, you know, would be very, very handy. So in this case, I'll concatenate um, just to show that you can use other functions to get your values in, during or while you're using the set keyword um, as you set the value and that also works uh, for your valuable for your variables and so in this case we have uh, you know I can say uh, at full name in my select statement and that'll give me um, the full name that I want to see there so just remember uh, you can use the functions just as I showed there you can use different functions you know concatenate you can do arithmetic and all kinds of other stuff um, and uh, and that makes it very very handy to do uh, before you do your final select and you might I mean if you're just working on some data on a database you might do it right in the worksheet as you see here but you might also put this into a store procedure and that would be rerunnable um, you can use uh, use them in comparison for comparison you know with operators so if white beans is greater than red beans uh, then you know um, you know you could print out you know something like uh, there are more there are more white beans than red beans uh, else uh, you know there there's you know um, more or equal to red beans uh, as the alternative uh, in that logic statement there so you could do like case when type of thing so you really can do all kinds of different um, uh, different kinds of comparisons and things to use uh, variables with. Um, the nice thing is they integrate very well with, uh, you know, uh, with the SQL scripting. And, uh, of course, you can use them natively uh, in, in the product itself without, you know, having to have your variables outside in, say, a Python script or, or in uh, .NET or something like that. Um, this is something that you can use directly right here, which is uh, really great. So if I, you know, do a statement like that, I can do a lot of the processing on the back end, uh, which makes it quite efficient. So if I change the input variables, you can see now I've got the same or equal to. And if I make it more red beans more than white beans, then it says there are more uh, or equal number of red beans again. And uh, so that's sort of how you can... Um, that's how you can use variables uh, outside of your select statements, but also uh, inside of your select statements. So you can also um, uh, use them alongside of um, queries that you do against your database, of course. So I'm using the AdventureWorks database, which is a sample database from Microsoft. And so I can do, you know, select top 10 last name, first name, from customers, uh, the customers table, um, and uh, that's going to give me um, an output of the top 10 customers. Uh, you can see, there we go, there, there's all the names. And so um, I could also, you know, we could pretend that, you know, red beans and white beans are some kind of, you know, you know, uh, you know district-wide total, sales total amounts or something and you want those in your query uh, alongside the name, so you can do that. You can just throw in the um, red beans and white beans or your sales totals or whatever. You can throw those in as a value that'll be repeated on every row, which is something that you know people will want to see depending on the kind of report that you have. Say, for example, you got the manager from somewhere else. Um, you could put the last name as manager um, and uh, and so you could have it in one view, you know, the sales totals with the manager and then all the names of the people. And uh, that's a nice way that you can use your um, you can use your your variables. So of course that begs the question, what if you wanted to go the other way around? And what if you wanted to populate your variables from values in a table or a query that you have? And so in order to do that, you can also do that. Um, generally, you want to try and get uh, your your um, output into a single row, and uh, if you're loading a single variable, 
And so in this case, we're, you can see I've got the, the very first row, and it's uh, Orlando G, and I'm going to say select top one, and then I'll put my variable name at last name equal to last name, at first name equal to first name from um, my customer table. And uh, now if I run this, it's just going to tell me that it did it um, because there's no output yet. Um, because all we did there was we loaded some, some values in. I'll get rid of all this extra stuff here. So now if I run it, <clears throat> it's going to load those variables um, into the, you know, from the table because we got one, one, uh, one row and it's going to load them. But it'll, it says it did it successfully, but, you know, it doesn't return anything. So in order for us to actually get, uh, you know, what happened to those variables, we have to do another select. And uh, in this case, uh, it will say select, um, you know, at last name as as last name, and then select at first name as first name. Um, so you can say as first name, or you can just say space first name uh, at, for your alias. And uh, in this case, if I hit F5, it's going to run that one as well. So if I if I run the whole thing. And now you can see I got first name and last name, and that's coming from the variable. And to prove that, I'll I'll put oh, I'll, I'll put var on the last name uh, um, alias, just so you can see that it's pulling from from the variable. And so that's sort of how you can get those um, those nice um, variables in, into your uh, get them loaded from tables, table values, and then I used an output. So say if I did just select top one star from sales LT dot customer, um, then you can see there's the top row. And there's our our Orlando G, and it's you know a bike store, Adventure Works, all this other data, and we loaded our variables uh, from that row, and uh, that's very very handy, and uh, that's sort of our. Our variable usage uh, when we want to select from a table and uh, so we can use other types um, say we you know you can do all of the, all of the other date data types you can use uh, so my my date um, as uh, as a date time and then you can load that um, if you like you can load it right in the declare um, statement so you could say 2021-10-01, and, uh, and that variable will be loaded as a date time variable. And um, you know, you can use, then you can use that uh, my date as, a, you know, as an output for something else, or you can do a calculation or something like that. And um, you know, as the date, and I'll, I'll put, uh, now you can see that this is a date time, so it's actually got all the time uh, stuff on it as well. So you could format that just as we have in some other videos that you could check out. And uh, that is how you can use variables in SQL Server with TSQL. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use variables in SQL Server. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell when you see the bell and put any questions or comments you might have in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.